God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Surrender to God, and he will do everything for you. Alleluia. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not envy those who do evil, for they wither quickly like grass and fade like the green of the fields. If you trust in the Lord and do good, then you will live in the land and be secure. If you find your delight in the Lord, he will grant your heart's desire. Commit your life to the Lord, trust in him and he will act, so that your justice breaks forth like the light, your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait in patience. Do not fret at the man who prospers, a man who makes evil plots to bring down the needy and the poor. Calm your anger and forget your rage. Do not fret, it only leads to evil. For those who do evil shall perish, the patient shall inherit the land. A little longer and the wicked shall have gone. Look at his place, he is not there, but the humble shall own the land and enjoy the fullness of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Surrender to God and, and he, he will, will do, do everything, everything for you. you. Alleluia. Turn away from evil and learn to do God's will. The Lord will strengthen you if you obey him. Alleluia. The wicked man plots against the just and gnashes his teeth against him. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that his day is at hand. The sword of the wicked is drawn. His bow is bent to slaughter the upright. Their sword shall pierce their own hearts, and their bows shall be broken to pieces. The just man's few possessions are better than the wicked man's wealth. For the power of the wicked shall be broken, and the Lord will support the just. He protects the lives of the upright. Their heritage will last forever. They shall not be put to shame in evil days. In time of famine, their food shall not fail. But all the wicked shall perish, and all the enemies of the Lord. They are like the beauty of the meadows. They shall vanish. They shall vanish like smoke. The wicked man borrows without repaying, but the just man is generous and gives. Those blessed by the Lord shall own the land, but those he has cursed shall be destroyed. The Lord guides the steps of a man, and makes safe the path of one he loves. Though he stumble, he shall never fall, for the Lord holds him by the hand. I was young, and now I am old, but I have never seen the just man forsaken, nor his children begging for bread. All the day he is generous and lends, and his children become a blessing. Then turn away from evil and do good, and you shall have a home forever. For the Lord loves justice and will never forsake his friends. The unjust shall be wiped out forever and the children of the wicked destroyed. The just shall inherit the land. There they shall live forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Turn away from evil and, and learn, learn to, to do God's, God's will. will. The Lord will strengthen you if you obey him. Alleluia. Wait for the Lord to lead, then follow in his way. Alleluia. The just man's mouth utters wisdom, and his lips speak what is right. The law of his God is in his heart. His steps shall be saved from stumbling. The wicked man watches for the just and seeks occasion to kill him. The Lord will not leave him in his power, nor let him be condemned when he is judged. 
Then wait for the Lord, keep to his way. It is he who will free you from the wicked, raise you up to possess the land, and see the wicked destroyed. I have seen the wicked triumphant, towering like a cedar of Lebanon. I passed by again, he was gone. I searched, he was nowhere to be found. See the just man, mark the upright, for the peaceful man of future lies in store. But sinners shall all be destroyed, no future lies in store for the wicked. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord, their stronghold in time of distress. The Lord helps them and delivers them and saves them, for their refuge is in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Wait for the Lord to lead, then follow follow in in his his way. way. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, risen from the dead, will never die again. Alleluia. Death no longer has power over him. Alleluia. From the beginning of the book of Revelation. This is the revelation God gave to Jesus Christ, that he might show his servants what must happen very soon. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, who in reporting all he saw bears witness to the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Happy is the man who reads this prophetic message, and happy are those who hear it and heed what is written in it for the appointed time is near. To the seven churches in the province of Asia, John wishes you grace and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and ruler of the kings of earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his own blood, who has made us a royal nation of priests in the service of his God and Father. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. See, he comes amid the clouds. Every eye shall see him, even of those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth shall lament him bitterly. So it is to be. Amen. The Lord God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress and the kingly reign and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaimed God's word and bore witness to Jesus. On the Lord's day, I was caught up in ecstasy and I heard behind me a piercing voice like the sound of a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you now see, and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Theatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see whose voice it was that spoke. When I did so, I saw seven lampstands of gold, And among the lampstands, one like a son of man, wearing an ankle-length robe, with a sash of gold about his breast. The hair of his head was as white as snow-white wool, and his eyes blazed like fire. His feet gleamed like polished brass refined in a furnace, and his voice sounded like the roar of rushing waters. In his right hand, he held seven stars, a sharp, two-edged sword came out of his mouth, and his face shone like the sun at its brightest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, There is nothing to fear. I am the first and the last and the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I live forever and ever. I hold the keys of death and the nether world. Write down, therefore, whatever you see in visions, what you see now and will see in time to come. 
This is the secret meaning of the seven stars you saw in my right hand, and of the seven lampstands of gold. The seven stars are the presiding spirits of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. I, John, heard the Lord saying to me, to the presiding spirit of the church in Ephesus, write this. The one who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven lampstands of gold has this to say. I know your deeds, your labors, and your patient endurance. I know you cannot tolerate wicked men. You have tested those self-styled apostles who are nothing of the sort and discovered that they are impostors. You are patient and endured hardship for my cause. Moreover, you do not become discouraged. I hold this against you, though. You have turned aside from your early love. Keep firmly in mind the heights from which you have fallen. Repent and return to your former deeds. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this much in your favor. You detest the practices of the Nicolaitans, just as I do. Let him who has ears heed the Spirit's word to the churches. I will see to it that the victor eats from the tree of life which grows in the garden of God. To the presiding spirit of the church in Smyrna, write this. The first and the last who once died but now lives has this to say. I know of your tribulation and your poverty, even though you are rich. I know the slander that you endure from self-styled Jews who are nothing other than members of Satan's assembly. Have no fear of the sufferings to come. The devil will indeed cast some of you into prison to put you to the test. You will be tried over a period of ten days. Remain faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. Let him who has ears heed the Spirit's word to the churches, the victor shall never be harmed by the second death. Be faithful even unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Those who have been victorious need not fear the second death. Alleluia. Fight to the death for truth, and the Lord God will do battle for you. Those who have been victorious need not fear the second death. Alleluia. From a book addressed to Monimus by St. Fulgentius of Ruspe, Bishop. The spiritual building up of the body of Christ is achieved through love. As St. Peter says, like living stones, you are built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. And there can be no more effective way to pray for this spiritual growth than for the Church, itself Christ's body, to make the offering of his body and blood in the sacramental form of bread and wine. For the cup we drink is a participation in the blood of Christ, and the bread we break is a participation in the body of Christ. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, since we all share the same bread. And so we pray that, by the same grace which made the Church Christ's body, all its members may remain firm in the unity of that body through the enduring bond of love. We are right to pray that this may be brought about in us through the gift of the one Spirit of the Father and the Son. The Holy Trinity, the one true God, is of its nature unity, equality, and love and by one divine activity sanctifies its adopted sons. That is why scripture says that God's love has been poured into our hearts 
by the Holy Spirit he has given us. The Holy Spirit, who is the one Spirit of the Father and the Son, produces in those to whom he gives the grace of divine adoption the same effect as he produced among those whom the Acts of the Apostles describes as having received the Holy Spirit. We are told that the company of those who believed were of one heart and soul, because the one Spirit of the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is one God, had created a single heart and soul in all those who believed. This is why St. Paul, in his exhortation to the Ephesians, says that this spiritual unity in the bond of peace must be carefully preserved. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, he writes, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, with all humility and meekness and with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit. God makes the church itself a sacrifice pleasing in his sight by preserving within it the love which his Holy Spirit has poured out. Thus the grace of that spiritual love is always available to us, enabling us continually to offer ourselves to God as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to him forever. I pray for them that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. I have given them the glory you gave to me. That they may be one as we are one. Alleluia. As you have sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. That they may be one as we are one. Alleluia. Let us pray. All powerful God, help us to proclaim the power of the Lord's resurrection. May we who accept this sign of the love of Christ come to share the eternal life he reveals, for he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.